Freeman is back, and this time he's madder than ever. In the heart-pounding sequel to the critically acclaimed Can I Beat Cyberpunk Only Is You Cool, this time Gordon's got something even better up his sleeve, Brawn. Kill you. My life after all. No place of glory for me. This is tanking. It's neurogenic shock. He's dying. With nothing left to lose, Night City better watch out for this buff as hell scientist. Can he find a solution to the ticking time bomb in his noggin, or will he die trying? How about a coffee? Word of warning, it could be delicious. Seems to be working now. Well, you asked for it, folks. Yet another cyberpunk challenge video. We will be continuing the theme of only one attribute tree, but this time we will be doing it with only our body. Well, to be more specific, the body attribute. Again, I will be using a save editor to reduce all attributes to zero, except for body, of course. So with the general gist out of the way, now it's time for the ground rules. Again, we are doing this the hard way, the very hard way, with the secret ending and very hard difficulty. Since body has a lot more to offer than cool, I decided to make this a fists only run. I am sure this won't want to make me tear my hair out. Obviously any sections where I am forced to use guns, I have no choice. I mean if you think about it, my fists contribute to pulling the trigger so you could say it counts. So to this end we can only put points into the athletics and street brawler trees. This means no grenades, quick hacks, or slipping poison into their morning cup of coffee as we watch them from the window laughing maniacally. What the hell did I just say? So, with the rules established, let's begin the run. As indicated, we return to our street kid who wears the face of Gordon Freeman. With his meat hooks at the ready, he begins his journey to once more be a legend of Night City. At this point, I have a general route I always take with my runs. First, I train myself up to be more prepared for Act 2, and to raise my street cred. Our main goal there is to make it so we can obtain two key pieces of cyberware, Gorilla Arms and the Berserk Operating System. This should allow us to dish out some serious damage with Dem Paws, while also reducing incoming damage. I mean, that was the main idea at least. When I was researching for this challenge, I was like, yeah, that sounds good on paper. In practice, it wasn't always great. Anywho, I'm getting ahead of myself. You guys want the story here, I am sure, right? Right? After Jackie and I get acquainted once more in this reality, I take some time getting swole by knocking out the competition. Dex once again gives us secondhand smoke. <coughs> Bro, I need these lungs. Can you not? He tasks Jackie and I to collect everything we need to complete the big heist. We smack around Maelstrom, making sure to tag Brick for a little help later. I get the details from Evelyn. Honestly, not super interesting, but you know, there are some dancing ladies, which was nice. Though I missed the Arasaka guard. He was, he was pretty cool. I did manage to scrounge together the scratch and street recommendations for the gorilla arms to round out act one. Then it's the big heist. Of course, per usual, Daddy Arasaka pays for not being a good father. I guess this is just a fixed point in the multiverse because it never seems to change. Sometimes family drama transcends all else. Anyways, we get the chip and we once more lose Jackie. I wish there was a way to save him because he's such a great character. Dex does his song and dance, no blaze of glory for me. Listen pal, just wait. After witnessing a rocker boy destroy half a city in order to save his ex, Takamura gets revenge for us before taking us home. Johnny tries to peer pressure me into smoking, which I decline. And boy is he pissed about that. We work out a compromise and this takes us into the second act. Now it's time to do a bit more preparation before completing things. The body tree is mostly built around health and resistance stats. Many of its perks include ones to help with health regen. However, it's not enough to keep me alive. 
I figured I would augment this with some cyberware specifically designed for the body tree, such as the biomonitor and blood pump. The biomonitor will uh, restore health when we drop below a certain threshold, which is really helpful, especially when uh, most enemies just one shot us later on. And any anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. The blood pump is basically a healing item that acts instantly. So it's very helpful because uh, most of the other healing items take time to activate. And then, you know, when you're getting shot by bullets, you want, you want it to be quick. So with these special augments acquired, it's time to continue our tale. First on the docket, we have the rescue of Evelyn to take care of. This really goes without a hitch. Honestly, the build is great for the early levels. I let Mr. Hand steep my relationship with the VDBs, and next we once again want to kidnap a certain man from hell. I get acquainted with Pan Am once more. We work together to get her vehicle and goods back. However, this is not enough to satiate her appetite for revenge, so it's once more time to take on Nash's den. This time Nash's den doesn't prove too much of a challenge, and with revenge in hand, it's on to getting Hellman. Pan Am and I punch our way through Kang Tao, and I karate chop Hellman. Hiya! Johnny gets a bit jealous that I would help Pan Am get revenge and not him, and recounts his tale of corporate destruction. I mean, whatever makes him happy. I, I get brownie points out of it, so who am I to argue? Now it's on to the Voodoo Boys. Their task for me is to clear out the mall rats from the local mall. Now this looks like a job for Exterminator 1 and Exterminator 2. I get into a fistfight with another follower of the body gods, but I prove to her that I'm the superior brawler because I eat my spinach. We interrupt a day at the movies since someone can't find their assigned seat, but it turns out the voodoo boys lied about the seating arrangement. And, and they tried to kill me. So after I deal with Alt, it's time to show them my fists of fury. This is for being smug, and this is for killing me without knowing that I will come back. With those two chapters out of the way, it's time to help Takamura. First, I treat myself to a little berserk. Mmm. <coughs> um, is that body odor flavored? Takamura's plan is to get Hanako Arasaka to listen to us. His plan is to ambush her during a parade and take her out on a date so she will listen to us. In order to officiate this date, I need to hack a parade float stealthily. Luckily, fists prove a great alternative to stealth. They can't see me coming if there's a fist obscuring their vision. Once the float is all virused up, we move on to the parade. I easily take down the snipers patrolling the parade. Hey, I said easily, what the hell? Why'd you show this? And then once again, face Oda. Fists versus blades. I managed to take him down without much issue. Turns out Takamura didn't have time for a date. So we try to reason with Hanako at a seedy motel. But Daddy Arasaka is always watching, and then it's once again time to abandon Takamura for Johnny. Damn it to hell, I cannot leave this man again! With Takamura safe and Hanako once again stuck at embers for an eternity, it's time to get things squared away with Johnny. We meet with Rogue to hunt down Smasher for old times sake. This falls through, but Johnny and I share a heartfelt moment which leads to the ending we desire. This means we are ready to trigger the ending. However, 
I know what happens if I attempt things too early. This means it's time to montage our way to be prepared. Please hold. Alright, so skipping 30 plus hours of my life in one minute, we are now at max level and I have collected a full set of maxed out legendary armor and cyberware. This time, ready to smash my way through Arasaka's de- Yeah, so this doesn't go the way I thought. Pretty much everything kills us instantly or in a couple shots. The only real technique that seems to work is a combo of optical camo and berserk. But even that's not enough. I worked so hard for this moment. I can't let it slip away. I must use the powers that I've gained. I grip my teeth, ready to fight through the pain. Let's do this! And that's it, we've beaten the game with our body. I did lose most of my hair in the process, but it was worth it in the end for that sweet, sweet bragging points. I hope you guys enjoyed the run and I will see you next time.